muito mal. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin with the proceedings of today's conference, I would like to take you through the housekeeping rules. First, the housekeeping rules for all our attendees. We would like to inform you that you can use any device, the mobile, tablet, or the laptop. The supported browsers are Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. Networking and chat facility will be available from 1.30 p.m. onwards. To participate in chat, please click chat available on the right side of the screen. For personal chat, click on the attendees. And you can follow us and subscribe to our social media handles like Twitter at setcom underscore India. On LinkedIn, you can contact us and follow us on Setcom Industry Association India. For any tweets related to the conference, use hashtag ground segment in India. And the housekeeping rules for speakers. The all our distinguished speakers are requested to join from laptops only. Do not use mobile or the tablets. The supported browsers are once again Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. And use tested wired headphones or laptop speakers. Avoid using Bluetooth headphones. And please ensure good lighting in the room. Kindly keep your audio muted except when you are speaking. And do keep your tweets coming and please use the hashtag ground segment in India. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we begin the proceedings of our today's conference. Namaskar and good afternoon, distinguished dignitaries, senior government officials, distinguished panelists, speakers and participants, a very warm welcome to the virtual conference on Satellite Ground Segment in India Way Forward, which is being organized by Setcom Industry Association, SIA India. SIA India is a not-for-profit body created to represent the interest of the satellite communication ecosystem in India. As a vibrant body, SIA India represents satellite operators, satellite systems, launch vehicles, ground and terminal equipment manufacturers, and application solution providers to the government, regulators, policymakers, and domestic and international standards bodies. As the thought leaders for the satellite communications ecosystem, we aim to present the industry's interest to the highest government level to for policy making, regulatory and licensing matters. CI India, ladies and gentlemen, is excited to observe the industry developments as the space segment matures from limited Earth observation and communication applications to the multiple constellations that need to be supported with necessary ground infrastructure, including multiple gateways, data centers, and communications links. Ladies and gentlemen, the conference today is supported by Access.Space, Antriksh Pratishthan, Nepal, Asia Video Industry Association, EMEA Satellite Operators Association, Geeks Without Frontiers, GVF, the Satellite Solutions, the World, IEEE.SA, the Standard Association, Nalsar Hyderabad, Planet Aerospace, Dhruva Space, Space Tide, and TEPC Driving Telecom Export. And the participating companies in this conference are Anand Technologies, Humes India, Intelset, Inmerset, IGI Limited, which is the Government of India undertaking, KSAT, TCIL, and Thales Alenia Space. And the media partners are Satellite Cable TV, Voice and Data. And ladies and gentlemen, for the welcome address, we have the privilege of having today with us Mr. Anil Prakash, Director General, Setcom Industry Association, India. He has a wide experience of 37 years in the government relation, regulatory, and policy framework with strong techno-commercial background in telecom, ICT, satellite, and broadcasting on digital platforms. 
He has been associated with International Telecommunications Union ITU for more than two decades and has played an influential role in contributing towards ITU's activities in India. And over to yourself for the welcome address. Uh, thank you, Sapna Ji. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, friends. Uh, it is a great honor uh, for me to uh, addressing such a, uh, a community, which is a which is a vibrant community and satellite community, and uh, we are very uh, happy to uh, looking forward to the day deliberation uh, followed by the couple of sessions and uh, the proceeding of the, the inaugural session. And uh, uh, the role is already set by the government of India, creating a, such a uh, uh, the policy initiatives, which uh, not only playing a catalytic role, but also providing a way forward how the satellite industry should grow in that direction. And any any industry, if you take uh, the prominent role in India, is given by the PSU, and. Nonetheless, uh, ISRO had played its role, significant role in developing uh, the, the uh, space ecosystem in the country. Uh, initially, of course, it was all every bit, everything was centric to ISRO, and the industry has grown around it and matured over a period of time. Now, this the industry which have grown along with ISRO are able to contribute a, a much larger role by developing a another ecosystem for the country, not only uh, for for India uses, but also for the export. And nevertheless, from the ground uh, uh, upward, the uh, number of startups have taken the initiative in the last uh, 10 years. Those are quite prominent starters, and we are in the league of the startup nation, and uh, we are not far behind uh, with the uh, developing countries like Japan or Korea uh, 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 and China. Uh, uh, the, we, we already have the startup community, which is quite uh, vibrant, and uh, they are producing world's best class uh, technology, which not only be uh, used for Indian uh, uh, space uh, sector, but also used for the global uh, requirement. And uh, this not only bring uh, uh, the industry to grow, but also bring a lot of investment in the country. And uh, the new segment is also coming forward to play its role. I'm here to, uh, to mention the significant role which a ground segment is going to play. And this conference is dedicated for to discuss the, the, the issues related to technology, the business economies, and the standards in the followed uh, sessions. And uh, uh, the ground segment industry will definitely bring new uh, dimension to the whole um, ecosystem in the country by developing uh, the technology for the ground segment and also the manufacturing uh, capability for the ground segment and also uh, the employment uh, for the number of people who will be working in the ground segment. So this is a very new for us, but uh, here uh, with us to partner with a number of uh, international uh, players who have a rich experience in uh, working in the ground segment. Uh, they will going to partner with India and they will collaborate uh, with them uh, to bring uh, this segment, ground segment a, a vibrant uh, industry in India. Uh, with that note, I will just end here and thank you very much uh, for uh, this opportunity and looking forward for the day deliberation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for those warm words of welcome. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the opening address, we have with us Dr. Subarao Pavaluri, President of SIA India. Dr. Rao is the CMD of Anant Technologies Limited, ATL. He founded Anant Technologies in the year 1993, which is the first private industry to set up assembly, integration and testing facilities for satellite and launch vehicles in India. Dr. Rao is a technologist and an entrepreneur with extensive experience in Indian Space Program, ISRO, for over four decades. And may I now invite you, sir, Dr. Subarao Pavaluri, to kindly begin the proceedings of the conference with your opening address. Over to you, sir. Thank you for a warm welcome. 
and thank you anil for setting up the tone for the rest of the discussions on this important subject of satellite ground segment in india and way forward namaskar and good afternoon to everybody mr sunil kumar niranyanyan a ddg satellite sri ratnakara director satellite program office isr headquarters sri aram agarwal ji chairman and md it limited and sri sanjeev kumar chairman and md tcil and sri uk sivaswa ji senior ddg at department of telecommunication and the distinguished speakers ladies and gentlemen i am glad and proud to announce that sa india brings to you today yet another important conference on the topic of satellite ground segments a critical part of the entire space sector and this is a series of conference that we are holding and this is one of the important thing that we are bringing to the the industry and to the policy makers this is the first time ever this segment is going to be discussed among some of the high, highest dignitaries and industry leaders in this country ground segment as you know is a very critical element in any satellite communication system at one at one end we have the, the link that provides the interface between the satellite and the user that's one end and the other end we have the link pro that provides interface between the satellite and the global telecommunication network in most of these cases the satellite plays the most important role of pass through of course thereby connecting the user to the global telecommunication network and uh, bringing the the people together however it is a, a less addressed sector as on today in india due to the fact that requirement was limited earlier now with the change in the policies the requirements are going to be multifold the ground segment requirements today are quite different from conventional satellites that india was dealing with earlier before which the satellites earlier largely operated with a single wide beam spanning a larger area and needed limited ground segments for the operations at that point of time now with the satellite systems like emios leos which are being operated through narrow beams coming into being with a limited coverage that requires multiple s stations and terminals these s stations terminals ensure proper operation of satellites by receiving data sending new commands observing orbital position and watching for the debris these stations are typically large permanent facilities that provide continuous contact with the satellite uh, sir can you unmute yourself In fact, I, oh sorry, I, I, I unmuted. Oh sorry. Yes, sir. No problem. Shall I begin Can again? You? Shall I begin again? No. Yes, sir. Uh, just last, we missed the last two sentences. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I think I'll continue with this. Okay. Yes, sir. In fact, as all of you know, the space sector is a, the highly, you know, capex industry with long gestation periods. and where the ground segments hold a substantial part part you know need a long term vision and a timely policies the decisions from the government of india the government is very focused today and keen to build on the fundamental areas of space communication competition and cooperation to facilitate a conducive space mm -hmm. for an increased private sector participation there are several key policy decisions announced and several are in the draft stage to create a, a robust very robust digital infrastructure to connect the unconnected the new policies would be addressing the ground segment sector licensing spectrum as well as the ease of doing business once the fundamental rules are set india would be all set to take the next leap of getting into a rightful pie of the world space economy which is supposed to be by mind boggling numbers by exploiting the space capabilities for fulfilling the unmet needs of the nation and tapping into domestic and international markets the pace of innovation in the space sector has accelerated 
and it is not just limited to satellite design or launches alone. It also involves components of the ground segment ecosystem, including the baseband, modems, antennas, radio frequency equipment, and the software layer to support satellites and ground operations. And as a share of space economy, you have to comment something about the numbers that are likely to be. The share of the ground equipment, including gateways and user terminals, is 48% today. That is the estimation, which is the highest to follow by this share of space applications and the services at that 45%. And the rocket launch services, merely 2%. And the manufacturing of satellites, 5%. This is what the global scenario. And however, globally, it represents a relatively large market where the ground segment is projected to be a 67 billion cumulative market from 2021 to 2030. There is a rapid growth and a growing interest in the ground segment market world over and cannot be overlooked when talking about innovation in satellite systems. So therefore, presently, the several companies are taking a lead in the ground segment sector in India we see the market potential being leveraged by satellite operators, satellite services, licenses, licenses, and independent air station providers and the leading <clears throat> hyperscalers. It is essential that user terminal cost is reduced substantially to make the services available to larger sections of the society, especially in the rural areas. So therefore, the global expert analysis highlights that the ground segment ecosystem is a turning point today driven by technology innovation and changes in demand patterns from private and government users. The need for more ground station, I mean, the facility that goes along with the ground station is accentuated with the different sector needs. These two, both civilian and different sectors, need to be addressed. With the extensive opportunities that we have in the, speed law, in the, in the space, for example, space situational awareness is one part of that, and earth observation, earth, that earth observation system is another part of it, and the remote sensing. See, there are various segments. These are the important segments that we're mentioning here in this. With the government opening up the space sector to private sector of participation immensely today, the several additional revenues are opening up to build statistic capacity, strategy capacity, and capability. In fact, this situation will change with the massive demand generation in the near future. That is the what you know they're going to be good for the industry all around. We never that with the, with the newer the high throughput satellites coming up and the new technology coming up, new antennas will be needed to track mega constellations, driving a huge demand in frequency needs. So availability of spectrum is critical for both the constellations and also ground, and, and, and the ground counterpart. So therefore, global best practices such that the demand and market economics will bring the cost of capex and opex both down gradually and especially when there is a shift of functionality mode into the crowd and visualizing the services in line with the ground station as a service trends. I mean, this is something is going to be very, very important that I'm sure that all the ground operators will note and will act on us in future. The market business models must be explored in this context with mergers and equations, transactions with the strategic partnerships, and providing unparalleled and end user experience with the value added into the economy. Therefore, under the visionary leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, already assured the you know, historical telecom reforms to ensure the most affordable telecom services mm -hmm. in the country. And we hope the SATCOM reforms also take the digital transformation to the next level in India. The government aims for a SAT, SATCOM revolution in the country and to achieve that, transformative initiatives have to be taken up at the highest level from creating a state-of-art infrastructure to providing services, from indigenous manufacturing products to human resources development. So unlocking this huge potential calls for an innovative and pragmatic approach, along with the diligent implementation. The task is so huge for all the stakeholders to shape a new route of success. And I'm sure the outcome of today's deliberations would be constructive and fruitful. We have an illustrious panel in line to discuss with the pertinent topics. The first panel discussion is going to be on the satellite ground segment technologies, which covers the underlying technologies, multi, multiple, multi frequency operations, including optical, collab, optical and, and you know, on a visualization, manufacturing collaboration, networking, cloud security, etc. The second panel covers 
the satellite don't segment business economics the economics such as pricing models business drivers operational models both captive versus use and versus urbanization urbanization of the various owning owning the the fleet for ground segments regulatory hurdles and international best practices and the third and also the important session covers the standardization satellite ground segment this is what's called for today the panel would discuss the need efforts and developments on standardization and global harmonization with impact of the satellite ground segment it is good to have started our collaborations by hosting this joint workshop with the tsdsi and also triple e sa i am eagerly looking forward to how how this event unfold how this the event is going to unfold the recommendations will be carved out into the conference with of the deliberation with the deliberations which will be sent to the concerned authorities for its implementation that's what you know sa is playing a very vibrant role in this regard and hopefully the uh, the recommendations that goes out of the, com the the conference today will be accepted largely by the government of india and thank you all and namaskar thank you very much indeed sir that was a very informative opening address and very good start to our today's conference and ladies and gentlemen after that opening address by dr subha rao president sia india we have coming up to very important industry keynote addresses for the first keynote address of the industry we have with us mr bashir patel senior advisor in mercet and he's covering asia pacific middle east and african apmea region mr patel is highly experienced executive in ict satellite systems and defense aerospace both in management consulting on policy regulatory and spectrum management and business and market development a very warm welcome to you sir and over to you for the industry keynote address thank you very much and uh, let me thank the president of si india dr subai ro uh distinguished guests senior government officials fellow industry colleagues and ladies and gentlemen first and foremost uh, let me take this opportunity of thanking si india for their kind invitation for me to participate and for organizing this workshop on gateway technologies and licensing and regulatory aspects uh i think what is important is uh my colleague gautam sharma who's the managing director of india uh was to provide this uh presentation but unfortunately he's not is not available so instead um uh, as i cover the asia pacific middle east and africa region i said i would try and uh, help him out and take care of the presentation on the ground segment development uh for india and the way forward for that um now i have sent my slides can you yeah put on your video um if i yeah. do that then unfortunately the 4g network will make it such that the quality okay. of the voice might okay. deteriorate okay. so mm -hmm. i would not put on the video but i will certainly um can you share my slides or shall i uh put on share uh, no. you have my slides so if you could put my slides on that would be useful if not then i can share them so we are, we are we are opening the slides sir okay um so while while they're opening the slides let me just give a little bit of background what i like to do is to uh go through over the next 15 minutes or so uh to provide you a very quick overview really of the uh from the perspective of the satellite industry in terms of what we the way the development has happened uh, i think we've heard the president already dr subairo mention some of the key elements that have been key developments that have been going on um so from the introduction i'll move on to where the advances are in the space uh, clearly the development in space technology has driven also the need to provide ground segment and the development of the ground segment technologies when i first started my career we had a 32 meter antennas pointing towards the sky those were the good old days where you had very few manufacturers worldwide uh, who provided you with a intelsat large 32 meter dishes uh, sitting on a water table uh, so that you could direct the antenna to the satellites 
Uh, since then, the technology has enormously moved on, and this is what I intend to cover in the next 15 minutes very quickly. And so the ground segment, uh, the element of the ground segment, the benefits in the economics and the important role that the ground segment and particularly the gateways plays. And we need to look at that both from a technology as well as from the perspective of the the economics, the, the, uh, the, the benefits that it provides in terms of having a national uh, gateways uh, within the country and, and, of course, the services that the gateway will provide as well. Um, but it is important to also look at the licensing and the regulatory regime that also exists today and how best we can move forward uh, with uh, with some light regulatory uh, touches uh, as we move forward with the, with the development. So a quick introduction, um, followed by advances in both space and ground segment technologies, the innovative use of ground segment, given the benefits to the economics, to the national infrastructure. And, and I, I'll conclude by covering the licensing and the regulatory requirements for a new generation of gateways uh, for a variety of satellite constellation. Next slide. And the next one. Okay, so basically what we're seeing here really is within in the context of India and and I had been I had the privilege to work with uh, colleagues in the Department of Space and the Department of Telecommunication over the years. Um, satellite has played a very, very important role um, in the development of the country uh, over the last uh, since its independence, basically, and certainly particularly over the last 20, 25 years. Uh, it has helped enormously in various sectors of the Indian economy. And as you can see here, that, that the satellite role has been very important in serving the banking institutions, the government, empowering the villages, the broadcasting sector, uh, even the financial market, where we're working at $2 trillion worth of equity markets networking that's going on, uh, oil and gas development and service, uh, service stations and so on. Um, so. In, in, in the context of Indian economy, the satellite role has been quite phenomenal. And, and, and clearly it's, ha is, it's helped to some extent, not fully, but to some extent, it's helped to bridge the digital divide, particularly among the rural communities and the government, the educational establishments, the health clinics and so on. Next slide, please. Uh, what we see now is really the expanding role as the Indian economy has been growing phenomenally in the last particularly in the last decade or so, uh, with a growth rate anywhere from 7% to 9%, even higher. Uh, clearly, there is a need to grow in terms of digital transformation. And this is fueling an expanded set of applications that satellite broadband services are beginning to address. We have a whole new generation of both space and ground segment um, requirements uh, that is coming up now. And, and given the advances in both space and satellite ground segment technologies, these expanded applications uh, can effectively serve the new applications that are needed, very much needed, as India moves towards this digital transformation in economy. And that is very important, that India needs to have the broadband connectivity everywhere, anywhere and everywhere, serving all the citizens wherever they happen to be um, in the Indian subcontinent. Next slide, please. Next. So wh what do we see? We see major advances in number of areas uh, in the last, particularly in the last 10, 10 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at the space segment, um, the space segment development has been quite enormous, uh, both in terms of the payload. Basically, a satellite has two major components, the payload and, and the platform. The platform is basically the body, the structures, the structures are becoming lighter with newer material technologies, and the payload is becoming much more sophisticated and complex, given the fact that we have digital signal processors. And we're moving away clearly now to small beams, uh, steerable beams that are, can be put on, on land mass, surface of the land. So basically what you see is rather than one single global beam, uh, such as in the early 80s, we now see multiple steerable beams wherever there is a demand for traffic 
uh, and, bro and bandwidth and capacity, then we can stir multiple beams into that area to provide the services and the maintain the quality, the high bandwidth that may be required there and so on. So we see this e important development that is going on in the payload, given the advances both in terms of antenna technology with phased arrays, um, uh, power amplifiers as well, lower capacity, cost of capacity, uh, and so on. In addition to the space segment development, we see a lot of development happening in the space rocket. And of course, India has taken a lead in that area uh, with the enormous amount of launches that is done in the last, uh, last 10, 12 years and so on. Uh, much lower performance and cost of launches. You see a number of other uh, private sector uh, launch vehicles that are coming up as well and so on. And we see some enormous development happening in this area as well, which is helping to drive the cost down and launch multiple satellites all at once into space, whichever constellation they happen to be. And the third element that is much more important, which we're focusing on today, is really that of having a ground network, a much more resilient end-to-end -end ground network, uh, much higher performance, greater capacity, much, much more higher level of security, end-to-end. -end. So we're, we are looking at services from an end-to-end -end point of view, and that is very important. So the ground segment is a very fundamental part of that. Without the ground segment, you will not have services in the country. That is simple as that. And of course, there is also the development in the air interface, the radio air interface, which goes from the ground to the satellite and to the user and back again to the ground segment, because the, the ground segment act as the key connection to the terrestrial and international networks and so on. So with the advances in technology, what we see here is he drastically reducing the cost of providing satellite services? And that is much more important. Next slide, please. So here, what we see really is a gateways that is already implemented and uh, operated by BSNL, which is a service provider uh, to India for Imasat services. And we see the gateway here where we have the switching room. The antenna sizes, as I mentioned, have, have come down to somewhere in the region of anywhere from three or four meter dishes to about eight to nine meter dishes, uh, much more smaller. You have the network operation center, and then you've got the RF equipment coming in from the antenna itself. Uh, and that depends on the frequencies and the spectrum that you plan to use. So the RF component is unique depending on the space segment uh, and, and the spectrum that is being utilized. And then you have the, uh, the processing, the baseband equipment, uh, which you have here. And then the, obviously the, the facility itself in the electrical room uh, with a backup UPS services and so on. So that is very important. And, and that L-band services today are provided through uh, a gateway that it was established by, uh, with the, by BSNL. Um, and it was launched in 2017 um uh, within india and there are a number of users and of course the l band is very unique in terms of the spectrum itself um because it, it's basically you can use the band you can use that particular spectrum for any kind of weather conditions uh whether you have cyclones or hurricanes or whatever uh, um, sandstorms, any kind of weather conditions, it will withstand that and the signal will get through those conditions uh, to provide safety services. And that is one of the unique things about the Elban, that today globally uh, and within India, uh, when we have earthquakes, any kind of uh, emergency operation, disaster requirements, uh, GMDSS services, Global Maritime Distress and Safety Services are provided uh, for vessels operating around uh, around the coast of India and so on. Uh, whether fishing fleets or, or Indian Navy and so on. So that is important um, in terms of the gateway there. Next slide. This is on the L-band. The next slide is on the KA-band um, gateway, which became operational very recently on 1st of October 2021. This is using, of course, the spectrum from uh, in the 28, 29 gigahertz uh, band. Uh, which provides services, uh, broadband services, to both in terms of LAN, for, uh, for example, LAN Express service, or Fleet Express, or, or Global Express for aviation. Uh, people on mobility, uh, whether it's airlines or, or vessels, large uh, vessel fleets, and LANs such as trains and, and trucks and so on, uh, or 
um, various other locations. These kind of gateways uh, services are provided through this gateway, uh, which is established um, within India. Next slide. Next one. So when we when we look at the when we look at the gate uh, end to end kind of requirements here, um, <clears throat> then what we see in, in in terms of the current structure is, is the fact that you have a service provider which is licensed by the Department of Telecom, uh, TSP, uh, and, and then you have the consumer terminals, whether they happen to be on airline or vessels or, or land or even handhelds, as you can see here. Uh, which are provided, which are type approved uh, by various agencies, uh, accredited agencies and so on, uh, and installed, um, especially uh, installed uh, according to the requirements, the regulations that are there, particularly on airlines, uh, FCC approval, uh, Civil Aviation Authority approval and maritime and so on. Um, and, and then you have the, the gateway themselves, the gateway stations, uh, the wireless licenses issued by WPC, as we see here, and of course the satellite constellation, which are, is authorized by the Department of Space. Next slide. Um, the next few slides really talk about the kind of applications the gateway is serving through the satellites. And, and you can see here powering connectivity on land applications, whether we have fixed installations or people in Himalayas, uh, remote working kind of conditions on islands or whether we do talking of agriculture application and so on. So these are numerous land applications which operate from the terminal user equipment through the satellite, through the gateway, and then of course into a national or regional or international networks. Next slide. Um, so, so this one, again, talks a little bit, covers about the other important services, satellite on mission, in terms of emergency services I've already mentioned, pre and post disaster monitoring, uh, connecting media, uh, especially in coverage, uh, daily operations, government, e-government kind of applications and services, emergency communication, particularly, it's often used when we have earthquakes in India, uh, communication is critical because the land terrestrial communication is redundant. Um, next slide, please. We can go through the next few slides very quickly because of time. Uh, the other aspect is, is that of satellite for 5G. This is becoming quite important because there is much more discussion going on, technical discussions going on of the use of satellites, particularly for backhauling applications. Uh, support wide range of new 5G applications, uh, connecting vehicles and autonomous driving, uh, efficiently support firmware software over satellites, updates, map updates, real-time traffic conditions. Um, there are a lot of applications together which would complement in terms of the infrastructure. So the gateways are very fundamental in providing connecting to the, the, the core, if you like, the 5G core, and in fact, one of the things is the network slicing in 5G architecture, network architecture, is a, one of the element will be the satellite component uh, in terms of satellite access. So you actually have integration of satellite elements as part of the, the 5G core network, which then connects to the gateway. Uh, and the, that then provides the connectivity to anybody moving around in a hybrid kind of situation. Next slide. Again, we talked a little bit about the uh, powering connectivity, both in land and uh, uh, sea and air. Uh, various applications you can see from air traffic, man air traffic management. Clearly, if you, if you look at the, the way any flights that are approaching India as a subcontinent uh, from a distance of 100 kilometers, 100 nautical miles, um, they're in touch with the air traffic controller, where the information is updated every 15 minutes on every aircraft that it commercial airlines. And that is coming through a broadband connectivity that is provided. So there is a lot of communication, if you like, uh, aviation communication through satellite systems. And Gateway, of course, having a hub in India would be uh, valuable in providing that connectivity as well. So that is important. Uh, next slide, please. So this is just some of the statistics we have uh, in terms of the civil aviation organization, uh, 80,000 commercial aircrafts. Are being today fitted with the with the kind of system, uh, 
12,000 jets and so on. Next slide. Similarly, in terms of the maritime operations, you can see this uh, global disaster maritime distress and safety system. India, by the way, does have a rescue coordination set, RCC, which is important for the Indian Ocean traffic. There is a tremendous amount of flow of Indian tra vessel traffic through the through passing by the Indian subcontinent. So that is also very important in terms of having that GMDSS capability gateway within India. Next slide. And the next one after that. Finally, just to conclude, um, on the regulatory aspect, what is important here is the regulations that we're looking at today. Um, we need to see that they reduce regularly hurdles to encourage deployment of satellite services. That is very important if, if you want to have investment innovation coming into the country. Ease of established satellite gateways, providing commercial and operational flexibility, landing rights, reasonable spectrum prices for use of gateway, particularly for the feeder links, Recognition of test report uh, from the accredited international test lab, particularly for type approvals and testing of equipment and so on. So that is on the regulatory side. On the licensing side, clearly light licensing for satellite gateway is very important. There is a lot of investment. There is a much more lead time involved here. If I'm to build a gateway in India, it will take almost two to three years. And therefore, I need to get that investment underway and, and, and to do that. So the, the lighter the regulation schemes are, the better it is for me to invest and start this long lead development, putting up those gateways into the country. And of course, depending on the constellation, you can have different number of gateways, whether it's uh, for a geo, typically one gateway uh, may, may be enough, depending on the, the network architecture and the way you intend to provide services. Um, so Offering maximum flexibility for commercial operations is important. Blanket licensing of user equipment within the country, uh, uh, allowing free circulation of terminals as well, uh, and allowing foreign satellite operators to start uh, to apply for the license to put up these gateways uh, fairly quickly. And then finally, on the spectrum side, access to sufficient spectrum for current and future needs is very important. Spectrum certainty is critical for any major operator to invest in the country, putting up a gateway. Either they invest directly or through a service provider or alternatively uh, a mutual uh, two-party kind of uh, scheme that can be done. And protection of existing spectrum allocation as per the ITR radio, radio regulation is also very important. Uh, for, for, for to provide that certainty in spectrum. Next slide. Uh, so licensing of satellite gateways, the way forward, given that you're going to have multiple different stakeholders for in the, the service delivery chain, um, maximum commercial and operational flexibility is important. And that will allow this innovative use of technology in terms of gateways, the antennas, the sizes, the equipment, the baseband equipment, and so on, uh, the competitive environment that we want to create in order to make sure the services uh, are there at a fairly low cost, reduce cost for operators and prices for consumers, as I said here, incentives to provide service in underserved areas, <coughs> and therefore enhance quality of service and consumer choice. So that is important. And in fact, the, the government in the Indian National Digital communication policy uh, makes it very, very clear to have satellite gateways to provide affordable digital communication infrastructure. And this means that it, it really means that we need to have light licensing and regulatory conditions. This is almost a prerequisite for gateway investments and innovations within India. Uh, and, and as I mentioned below there, possible options for satellite gateway operations are satellite operator establish his own gateway and shares it with the service uh, satellite service licensees as a satellite bandwidth seeker. Um, there are other options such as ser service licensees sharing their own gateway hub with another licensee, and then third party uh, satellite gateways as well. I mean, there are a number of kind of commercial kind of flexible operations. And I think this is the important thing here that whatever way we move forward in India in terms of gateways, satellite gateways, we need to ensure that we have maximum commercial and operational flexibility for investment um, and bringing in the technology for different kind of technology for the gateways. Next slide. And this is my final slide. 
my apology for taking five minutes longer. Um, the concluding slide is really how do we optimize regulatory and licensing regimes? And, and this really includes a number of key elements, uh, technology neutrality, transparency, and non light touch rules are streamlined and cost-based, smart provision of access to spectrum, critical connectivity, uh, favor competition, uh, domestic and foreign operators on equal footing, which is very important, minimize local constraints, particularly get putting up the gateways, uh, facilitate provision and use of equipment, blanket type approval, I've already mentioned, uh, blanket licensing uh, for multiple kind of users, uh, security concerns can be en have an engineered engineering solution that overcomes national concerns, that is important. Uh, and finally, exchange and follow best practices that are developed regionally or internationally together with other regulators. So regulation is a means to an end. It helps to develop the competition, bring innovation and serve the goal of closing the digital divide that we have in India today and will continue to have unless we actually move forward in a much more, uh, much more uh, effective way in, in terms of bringing about these kind of uh, regulatory process uh, that helps to grow and develop the industry within India. With that, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for that wonderful presentation of the keynote industry address. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, we move on to the next industry keynote address, which is by Mr. K. Krishna, who is the Vice President and the Chief Technology Officer of Hughes in India. He has been one of the founding members of the India Operations of Youth. Mr. Krishna also plays the role of a chief regulatory officer and has been playing an active role in the formulation of the flight and maritime connectivity rules. And over to you, sir, for the industry keynote address. Thank you and uh, uh, very warm welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on you know, whichever time zone you are in. Uh, if you could please put up my presentation. Uh, next slide, please. So I think uh, based on a reference from Department of Telecom, uh, you know, the TRIS issued a consultation paper on, uh, you know, the gr ground segment, uh, you know, earth stations. Uh, so when you actually start looking at the consultation paper and, you know, so it, it, it all stemmed from the fact that there are multiple high throughput satellites in the Leo Mio constellations, which are coming up or have already come up. Uh, it was specifically to address that. But if you really look deeper, I, I think there's a plethora of other services, you know, which are possible uh, and, you know, which are already happening and in the satellite industry. And they all, you know, are going to need these ground segments. And there are very, very many different business models that exist today. Uh, there are very, very interesting, you know, companies, you know, that are today presenting as part of the panels, uh, you know, on, on these options. So I, I think uh, before you know I get to that part. Uh, so let me give you some you know the latest trends in the industry. Uh, so uh, you know in terms of you know manufacturing, in terms of launch, in terms of you know uh, in orbit servicing and so on and so forth. So let let me uh, you know get to each of them. Uh, next slide, please. So the year 2020 has been a pause year for the industry, and primarily because of the pandemic. Uh, but of course, the industry is bouncing back. So this year, 2021, uh, has seen a number of initiatives. Uh, and again, thanks to uh, NSR for putting out a, a beautiful overview of uh, you know what the industry looks like today. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to talk you through some of the points. Uh, so I think you know the launch and satellite build business has really bounced back. So there are many high throughput satellites and very high throughput satellites you know that, that have come into existence or you know being planned to name a few the and and there are you know path breaking innovations that have happened uh, utilsat connect ses 17 you know these are some satellites which have brilliant technology I, I i think more and more what we are doing is the technology is really uh, you know pushing the envelope you know much much beyond where you know it is today also, it is just not the data communications need. You know, the satellite, you know, build and launch is also driven by, 
you know the earth observation satellites uh, and also the iot space which is you know driven by the narrow band uh, satellites so they are, they are also uh, you know pushing it now again there is a lot of launch options available today spacex you know we all know disrupted this industry with the reusable rockets uh, but at the same time there are today all others you know have you know caught up one way or the other uh you must be hearing about the one web launches each launch is about 32 satellites so uh you know quite a good number and so there are both interesting dedicated options available and ride share options available where there are co passengers in a single launch so those those things are you know really uh you know have disrupted the industry and it's really put the industry on track uh, as of this year next slide please so another interesting area and especially this is very relevant for the existing satellite operators who already have satellites up in the sky who have been serving these markets for a very long period of time but suddenly you know they realize that the satellite life is over uh, and primarily even though the satellite is otherwise healthy it's a uh, fuelless you know run out so this is another area which is caught on uh, you know uh, if you uh no there is a company called north northrop grumman who you know launched this what is called as mission extension vehicle which can go you know latch on to an existing satellite and extend the mission of that satellite by injecting fuel into the satellite it's a very very good technology and it was successfully tested and demonstrated this is really going to be a game changer for many satellite operators is because the existing you know life of those satellites can be extended so there are many satellites which are very healthy and you know are aptly you know uh, so they have not only uh, you know uh, enough capacity left but also they have you know they have you know certain spectrum rights and you know so that's a that's a serving asset you know which is which is really good why waste it because it is run out of fuel uh, next slide please so next is the virtualization uh, you know of the ground segments a lot has been talked about uh, on this today everything you know in the satellite industry whatever used to be analog are all becoming digital so whether you take a spectrum analyzer whether you take frequency converters or you know whatever even amplifiers so you can digitally you know operate a lot of them uh, today and in addition to that you know everything has become ip uh, internet protocol based and as a result a lot of this network functions today you know can be virtualized and and that's what you know everybody is doing across the globe that today it's possible to control a, a gateway from sitting anywhere across the globe uh, you can update software you can provide various functionality you know sitting anywhere and and it's a very very high, highly virtualized uh, space and added to this the uh, earth observation and geospatial applications are you know probably the early adopters of this virtualization simply because of the fact that they are very very closely some of them are very closely associated with big data applications and a lot of big data applications today exist in the cloud and and they are highly virtualized so that is another reason why uh, you know this has really happened and end of it i think the ground segment itself is becoming a service so the ground stations are becoming a service so we'll we'll talk about it in a uh, I'll, I'll talk about it in a later slide uh, more on on this next slide please so the ngsos are becoming a reality uh, so probably you know early next year you know we we should have uh, uh, at least two constellations up and running Uh, probably three in you know if you include uh, you know o3b as well which is a meo constellation so they will all enter into service so the constellations you know there are many constellations that are announced they are all slowly and steadily getting funded uh, again the early movers you know have an advantage because they have you know brought up the constellation early they have you know they are at a faster pace when it comes to time to market but at the same time the you know the late entrants have the advantage of further advancement in technology so uh, it's it's going to be an interesting space and this is also driving the need for the gateways uh, you know we all uh, know this very well next slide please 
Uh, this I already touched upon a little bit. So IoT is another narrow band application. You know, uh, we've uh, a lot of developments that are happening in this space, primarily driven by transportation, uh, any kinds of transport monitoring. Uh, you know, military is a big user of this application and the energy sector. So these are the sectors that use this today. It's a very, very well established business model in the north uh, in the US, but it's now continuing to grow uh, in other regions. Uh, and uh, next slide, please. Uh, could you put up the slide in a uh, <coughs> full screen? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so this is, uh, so the satellite broadband is again prepped up for growth. So this is an interesting statistic from Euroconsult. Uh, which you know kind of echoes what the ITU has been saying that you know over 50 percent of the world is unconnected uh, when it comes to broadband. So uh, you know so which is you know about uh, Euroconsult puts puts this at at about 46 percent, which is about 3.5 billion people you know who are unconnected. And today the addressable market you know they believe the addressable market for satellite is about 697, we're close to about 700 million subscribers. Out of this 700 million subscribers, only 43 million subscribers have been addressed today by satellite, which means there's a huge gap and satellite, you know, so all this, so we are never going to have a situation where, uh, you know, there is going to be excess capacity or unutilized capacity. A lot of this, what is being launched is going to get used up. If we were to fill up that gap between the 43 and 697, uh, there is going to be a huge demand. And of course, there are other you know, uh, business models. Not every consumer is going to be addressed by a terminal uh, directly. Uh, it will be through Wi-Fi wi hotspots or cellular backhaul and things like that. Uh, you know, those are the ones which are going to help address this need. Uh, also, the enterprise customer base is constantly, because of software upgrades and newer applications coming in, they keep upgrading their bandwidth, and that is another area of growth for the industry. Next slide, please. So where, where is the ground segment growth coming up? With all these developments taking place, I said that you know at front that COVID-19 had a huge impact, not only in the satellite launch and build uh, you know, industry, but also in the ground segment industry. So because these two go hand in hand, and many CapEx decisions were put on hold, uh, but, but again, 2021 is a year where the industry is really turning around. So I already talked about you know a lot of HTS and VHTS satellites you know getting launched. Uh, so this is all going to need gateways. The Leo constellations, you know, and of course the Mio, they are going to need uh, gateways. Again, you know, gateways because of regulatory requirements, because of coverage requirements, you can't you know see a particular set of satellites from a gateway which is elsewhere. Or it is a regulatory requirement where, uh, in a country like India, we want the gateways, uh, you know, to be in country. Or in order to keep the latency minimum, you know, you want to be able to, you know, uh, guarantee a much smaller latency to the applications, and hence, you know, you want to put the gateway closer to where the traffic is. Other thing which is also which I already talked about is the cloud and virtualized options. So. Most of the you know data is moved to the cloud. You know, a lot of content applications are in the cloud, so it's very logical for the gateway also to be in the cloud. And that is why these are, uh, you know, there are business models today where you know gateway as a service you know are emerging. And of course, software defined you know anything and everything is getting software defined today, and so are the gateways, and that's aiding the push further. I already talked about it. Uh, in fact, the Earth observation side, there is a imagery side and non-imagery side. The non-imagery side is, you know, seems to be the fastest growing segment today. Uh, it has a CAGR of 48%, and you know, it's tremendous amount of growth. So this is again, it's not only the communications, but also the Earth observation and IoT, that's which is the narrow band, which is also driving the growth for the gateways. Next slide, please. So what is the, what are the dynamics of gateway deployment specifically for high throughput satellites? One, uh, I think from a choice of gateway locations, there are a number of parameters that are <clears throat> that are taken into account. Uh, so obviously, you know, you're trying to balance out the spectrum. Uh, you are, you know, you don't want the gateways and the terminals to start interfering with each other. 
but at the same time you want a good amount of spectrum reuse uh, so that's one criteria so you want to put the gateways at locations where you don't have much of user traffic but at the same time the gateways need to have very good internet infrastructure because you need to feed the internet to the gateways to be able for the users to be able to use that internet uh, a robust infrastructure in terms of power in terms of other you know manpower you know uh, electricity uh, you know so many things transportation all that should be available you know uh, in the location and of course you know today we have had a, you know we are talking about new problem which is possibly which is going to be the reality at some point of time where multiple services are going to share the same spectrum which means you also have one more dimension where the spectrum you know is you know you you can't put your gateway in a location where you know you will be sharing the spectrum with other services and the other services are dominant in that space so that's also another choice of uh, you know the gateway location of course uh, the another important aspect is the resource optimization because you know with with the leo constellations all of us know you know it is number of antennas which are put so obviously there's a high cost to it uh, so you know the uh, optimal way is for many of these high throughput satellites for you know somebody to put up one gateway and multiple service providers to share it uh, also in the higher frequency bands especially the millimeter wave bands the rain effect is very pronounced so you have to provide for diversity which means multiple of gateways you know need to be put so if you uh, do that obviously if, you know a service provider was earlier deploying one gateway now they have to deploy at least a minimum of two and the gateway configurations are very huge and as a result you know for diversity you know your cost goes up so which also you know uh, pushes you more to share share the gateways effectively now when it comes to who who can deploy the gateways i think if you look at it you know uh, except uh, I, I think we we have a construct regulatory construct in which we have this uh, uh, ministry of information broadcasting and department of telecom and we have this broadcasting as a separate you know line of business in india and the telecommunications business but globally if you go go through you know uh, the world trade uh, sorry world teleport association website i mean there are a fleet of you know teleport operators who can do both so today i think the teleport operators are also very very rightly positioned for providing this gateway services so our cloud service providers they are slowly entering the game because of the virtualization and of course the existing service providers are good candidates for providing the gateways what are the regulatory requirements i think these are some of the things which we are slowly beginning to iron out and you know as we move into the high throughput era of both gso and non gso uh, at one point of time we defined the size of the rft as you know a minimum 8.1 meter antenna and you know soon possibly at some point of time this has to change to adapt to the newer satellites and so those requirements again uh, have cost implications they have you know other implications with respect to how open a area you have uh, land uh, around it and interference uh, you know issues etc lawful interception is a big need so again that infrastructure also has to be co-located with the gateway and of course the last uh, but not the least is the, are the licensing requirements which a gateway has to go through uh, it is a qu quite a complicated you know licensing model uh and rightly so because a lot of issues you know need to be taken care of and as a result you know the gateways have to be optimally shared next slide so this is my last slide so which you know which brings us to the focal point of the, today's discussion of what needs to be the regulations for you know this gateway uh, you know operations should there be a separate gateway operator who should you know be able to provide the gateways i think there are two fundamental business models or two uh, operating models i shouldn't say business models but two uh, fundamental operating models one is where only the antenna and the rf are shared and second is it's a full package you know where the satellite operator is you know for good reasons has to operate the baseband as well the gsm uh, satellites hts satellites are predominantly are in the first model and the leo and mio are predominantly the second model the leo and mio are very very closely associated the baseband is very very closely associated to the construction uh, the design of the constellation itself so the the baseband and the rf and you know antennas are inseparable 
so with that being i i would say that you know for the gso hcs where the antenna and uh, rf alone is is being shared i think it should be just treated as an infrastructure i had an interesting conversation uh, with a gentleman in wpc mr patnaik uh, I, i would like to state that and, and and he came up with a very very interesting thought i it really stuck me and i want to really mention that here he said it's like you know you applying for a driving license you know when you apply for a driving license uh, you are given a driving license for a certain category of vehicle uh, you are not licensed you know to drive a particular car but you are you know uh, only licensed so you can with that license you can drive any car as long as it fits that you know like you know light motor vehicle lmb you know as long as you fit in that category you can drive any vehicle so the point i'm driving home is as long as the service provider is licensed to operate through a gateway the gateway should just be an infrastructure how does it really matter so you don't have to license each and every gateway separately but you just have to license the service provider to access that gateway but that scenario substantially changes in the leo uh, high throughput scenario or leo or mio high throughput scenario uh, more because the baseband is an integral part of that gateway and so the functions so the spectrum assignment has to take place you know to the uh, gateway operator the gateway operator now converts megahertz to mbps uh, is is also doing a lot of ip functions uh, there is a security requirement you know there so i think for the leo and mio gateways probably there should be a licensing framework you know maybe an authorization of course light touch but it has to be uh either a, you know authorization or a license you know issued under the indian telegraph act of course the license fee it's, it's a debatable point the license fee and the spectrum fees today uh, in the country are defined as a percentage of agr for the service providers so if that be so why should the gateway again be charged anything because already you know the license and the spectrum are being you know paid for in a uh, you know or the cost of uh, managing that is being paid for the, by the service providers why should the gateway operators again be charged so that's a view um, so uh, of course all of us are compiling and you know uh, uh, the date has been extended but we are all submitting you know doing the submissions by monday so a lot of clarity will emerge on these things as we go forward uh, so with this i'll like to end my presentation hope you enjoyed it thank you thank you very much indeed sir it was a wonderful presentation and ladies and gentlemen moving on we are indeed honored and privileged to have with us today on this virtual conference shri sunil kumar nirayan is the deputy director general satellite department of telecom is an indian telecommunication service officer of the 1992 batch with extensive field experience of working in bsnl and bbnl into policy reforms he has also worked in trai earlier from the year 2007 to 2010 and was instrumental in framing the mbmt recommendations in his stint in department of telecommunications since 2017 he was instrumental in initiating progressive steps like enhancing the scope of service providers to provide backhaul sharing of satellite hubs offered by an operator and with those words of introduction i have the proud privilege in inviting shri sunil kumar ji for his address over to you sir thank you sapna madam am i audible yes sir you are audible sir thank you dr subha rao president sia india Shri K Krishna, Shri Anil Prakash, industry representatives. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. After listening to the industry stalwarts, we indeed feel that we are in exciting period of fast technological changes, and I, I am happy to note that under the able leadership, seminal reforms have recently been carried out in the communication sector. the mention of new space brings up images like big powerful launch vehicles the satellites and the payloads however the operation of these satellite relies on communicating with effective ground segments 
and organizers of SIA have done well to focus on the ground segment, which is less glamorous and less talked about. DOT also took initiative in this regard few months back and a reference was sent to TRAI for giving recommendations of making a licensing framework for establishment of gateway by the independent entities or the satellite operators or the licensed TSPs themselves. So with this initiative and uh, the paper being open to suggestions, this is, this is the opportune time on which we are deliberating the issues so that we can carry home uh, a few points and get them implemented to in coming few months. Based on Honorable PM's announcement under the Atmi Nirbhar reform package in May 2020, Cabinet decision on unlocking India's potential in space sector has been announced, wherein ISRO facilities have been offered to private sector and new space com policy is uh, on the anvil. The new PSU named NSIL has been created to carry out commercial activities. That means space seg segment now finds itself on a, on a juncture uh, on which we were perhaps uh, uh, there in telecom in 2000 year when BSNL was carved out of uh, DOT and policy making regulation and operations were separated. So uh, you know how much energy that unleashed and we may expect the same in uh, space segment also. Satellite based services complement the terrestrial services and uh, there is a huge demand for satellite based and terrestrial telecom services that have put pressure on radio spectrum availability. In particular, the C band and the KA band frequencies that are needed for both space based as well as uh, there is contention of uh, IMT services. So, the K band is important for HTS satellites and uh, uh, there is contention in 5G services also. Further, many new LEO satellite constellations are also being designed using the KA band frequencies. So, it is necessary to ensure efficient use of the spectrum. This includes revisiting the uses in the existing frequency bands as well as in the newer frequency bands. Greater participation of the Indian industry through association like SIA India is key to translating the indigenous potential into capacity to meet the national needs and also to be so that India is a significant player in global space communications market. Recent enablements of DOT in licensing regime. As a part of the telecom reforms announced for all the licenses, uh, a few amendments have been done which are important, rationalizing of bank guarantee to one-fifth of the earlier amount. Then there is rationalization of AGR definition, giving a huge relief to the telecom industry. Then FDI limits have been revised up to 100% under automatic rule, except the bordering nations, which still need authorization. The process of SECFA clearance procedure for BTS tower have been sim simplified. Then enhancement of scope and of the VSET license has already been talked about, which should accelerate rollout of cellular and Wi-Fi services, furthering provisioning of connectivity under PM money, etc. once backhaul is allowed. The long-standing demand of industry was addressed when data speeds restrictions were removed. So, for captive licenses also, the entry fee has been halved to 15 lakhs and royalty change, uh, formula has been changed to remove the 0.25 factor therein. Some important works are in progress and we are proud to have initiated broadening of the scope of substantially address, uh, changing the scope by uh, allowing backhaul and another uh, Internet of devices is on the anvil. 
so that should substantially increase addressable market and the growth that was seen to be plateauing in last few years should uh, should see a higher growth path henceforth some important works that are in progress are uh, implementation of iot low bit rate applications and we are also touching upon simplifying the clearance procedures for satellite networks so that it takes minimum amount of time to roll out so i conclude by saying that uh, we request all of you to participate in the consultation process so that we can come out with an optimum and uh, suitable network for the ground segment as well thank you so much to the organizers thank you very much indeed sir for sparing your valuable time and gracing this occasion thank you once again for that noteworthy and informative address thank you and ladies and gentlemen uh, before we close the proceedings of the inaugural session i have the privilege of presenting a small introduction of sia india so ladies and gentlemen sia india the setcom industry association the public policy thought leaders for the communication satellite industry in india is a not for profit associated created to represent the interest of the satellite communications ecosystem in india as a vibrant body sia india represents satellite operators satellite systems launch vehicles and ground and terminal equipment manufacturers as well as application solutions providers to the government regulators policy makers and domestic and international standards bodies uh, can i request for the presentation to be put up as the apex representative body for the satellite communications ecosystem we aim to present the industry's interest at the highest government levels for policy making regulatory and licensing matters and ladies and gentlemen we have been acknowledged from time and again by the industry leaders to name a few dr v k saraswat member niti aayog deputy secretary general itu cmd and tricks corporation k ratnakara director setcom po department of space and ladies ladies and gentlemen we have a wonderful leadership team who are the force behind sia india dr subarao pavaluri is the president mr anil prakash is the director general mr sudhir gupta a board member ravi elavadi is also a board member other board members are mr ds govind rajan mr pavan kapoor mr bashir patel our arti hola many is secretary general esoa is on the advisory board on the advisory board other members are mr david hachon ceo gwf dr sm sharma former joint wireless advisor government of india mr greg daphner ceo gapset mr ingwar hernan director bd pacific satellite international Mr John Medeiros chief policy officer Aviva Mr Tony Azrelli is CEO and founder Azura Telecom Limited UK Mr SC Aluwalia is ex DDG satellite department of telecommunications Dr VS Hegre is former scientific secretary ISRO and CMD Antrix Corporation Mr Deepak Mathur is executive vice president global sales video at SES Mr Narayan Prasad Chief Operations Officer Sat Search Ms Seema Jingan a senior partner and co-founder at Lex Council and Mr RK Mishra is former deputy director general DOT and IT government of India and principal advisor TRI Subhman ji we can start the next session Okay sir thank you sir Another three So ladies and gentlemen uh, with that we are now moving on to the next session Kindly give us a moment while we log in to the panel discussion session one. Thank you, and stay back with us.